Casting time. Today, we have a 2v2. The players are just deciding the teams. We're going to be playing on Eastern Europe. We have B, which is crackly bread. We have Warbringer. We have Uno and Up All Night. The teams appear to be Up All Night and Uno versus Warbringer and B. B is an old player, but kind of returning. And Up All Night is a very experienced player. He is our strongest Novus player in the community, I would say. Purified is our best overall player, but Up All Night is our strongest Novus player, and that's not really open for debate. But we see some off-faction play here. B is usually a Novus player, and is opting to play Hierarchy. We have Warbringer playing Novus, which is his weakest race. We have Up All Night on Masari, which both of Up All Night's off races are about even, I would say. They're both pretty solid. And then we have Yuno on Hierarchy, which is his weakest race. This is interesting. We have Novus Hierarchy against Masari Hierarchy. I feel like I'm casting a lot of this matchup at the moment. I'm interested to see how this goes. So, I've been saying that I feel like it's in Masari Hierarchy's favour, but you really need Vizops for that to happen. And in the games that I've been casting up to this point, Vizops have not been the preferred choice for the Masari Hierarchy team. However, I know what Yuno is like, and I know that he would be willing to go for the visual optimizers. Can we start? There we go. So, as always, the nature of the game, the nature of this matchup, Masari is the focal point. They are weak to both Novus and Hierarchy because the base build layouts are completely different for both. In the top left, we have our B on Hierarchy. Not main faction, this is an off race. We have our Warbringer on the Novus, his weakest race, but still competent. We have our Up All Night on his Masari, absolutely solid, nothing to complain about, but not his best, Novus is his best. And a full off race game, we have Yuno on his Hierarchy. We have the one Glyph Carver extra start from Yuno, very interesting. Double Glyph Carver is seen as the standard, I believe. We have Up All Night rushing a Skirmisher portal. That's very interesting. Double Architect, first building. Warbringer is telling B about the instance and where to travel. Very smart. And from B, we also have a single Glyph Carver extra to start. Very interesting. Straight into a Machina. Interesting. So Apple Knight is probably going to be running figments for glyphs. This is a very interesting build. This is anti Mirabelle, as is correct. But low on the eco. If Warbringer recognizes that this base is not Mirabelle assaultable, Apple Knight will be definitely behind a bit. We have Reaper drones making their rounds for their instance. This is excellent play. You know is very good at his micro. B, definitely a bit uncomfortable it seems. There's an idle reaper right here. Warbringer is probably telling B to build in the water here. So we see a total of five reaper drones from you know. And from B we see... Three Reaper Drones. This is slow. B's got a very slow eco, but so has Up All Night. We see double matter engines boosted by Architects. And the first figment will be coming out any moment now. The first walker of choice from B uh, from Uno is an assembly walker, and from B it will be the same. First Figment is out on the board. 
Warbringer has the robotic assembly. Is he going to train own bots or blade troopers? There are no... It's not the blade trooper production. Okay. Mirabelle is out on the board. She is just connected to the field. We see good recycling centers from Warbringer. Well positioned next to big resource piles. On the flow network as well. B's got a bugged reaper. Oh my god. <laughs> that reaper is... Doing something. He's having a whale of a time. More reaper drone micro. I would say Yuno has gotten the better end of the early micro play. But he is missing out on some instants here. There's a lot of instants around here. Mirabelle is out and looking to harass Hierarchy. Uffle Knight is starting on his third Master Engine, and his second or third Figment comes out. They're going to be hunting for this Mirabelle. Mirabelle is making her way in. We don't see any Dark Mines down yet, I believe. She's coming from the back side of the base to scout, looking for Reapers, perhaps. Doesn't find any. And now we've got Yuno in B's part of the map, taking away instance. This glyph might get sniped if B isn't paying attention. Ooh. Glyph gets sold. Very nice. Okay. Not so disastrous, but the fact that Yuno is just taking this carver and taking instance is massive. Mirabelle went in. Looks like there was some sort of action. The Monolith actually provided vision for Mirabelle. I'm guessing that's why Up All Night was not able to connect with a stun. We have some own bots dotted around. This is Warbringer's style. These are scouting for potential Walker glyphs. In fact, it seems like they must have hit a glyph because this assembly did not come down. Neither did this one. I apologize for missing that. I didn't think that they would be cancelled. Maybe Monolith play. So it's a very slow and static early game. We have the Knowledge Vault coming down for Up All Night. And we have a single Reaper Drone being built in the Masari base. Standard, very good play. Warbringer is now capturing the Materials Factory. This is excellent for Novus. Absolutely excellent. You know is beating up B's Reaper here. Which means that we is going to have to sell this first. And no walkers. Oh, we finally have a walker up here. Okay. And we have a walker up here. So no walkers out in the center of the map. This is very interesting. Very defensive walkers from both sides. Presumably because these got cancelled somehow. We have a figman in the Novus base. Bullying them a bit. But of course, constructors can flow away even while stunned. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing they can do. This Reaper should be collecting some instants here. We see some anti-matter tanks coming in now. Five of them will not be enough to make any significant impact on this base, but they will likely get this Reaper drone. Light Figment Mines do some damage. It's significant, but not impressive. Vent Core happens. This will deal damage to everything. And the Reaper drone, which is the main target here, should be going down if Warbringer targets it does not continue targeting it. We see figments traded for anti-matter tanks. And more anti-matter tanks are swarming in. Oh my god, look at all of these units. Mirabelle is coming in as well. And we saw Knight go to light mode and drop the mines. Warbringer should know that there's minimal stuns now for Mirabelle. And his whole army is coming in. We have phase tanks coming in from Yuno. B does not yet have phase tanks. If B does, I don't see them. We have antimatter tanks coming in to fight the figments. Dark 2 mine goes off, stunning 3 antimatters. And the question is now, does, does Up All Night's base just get blown up? And I think the answer to that is yes. Oh, nice stuns and the phase tank support comes in. Vent core. The stun's going to wear off and the vent cores are going to go down. Vent core. Brilliant. The face tanks phase away. Very nice. And Juno has bailed up all night out of this. 
more fa uh, antimatter tanks are coming in. And it looks like this is going to be a successful hold in no small part because of Yuno's excellent phase tank play. And look at all these dead antimatter tanks, actually. Wow. This is very bad for Novus. There's going to have to be a change of strategy. You can't keep ramming your head into the wall like this. Preemptive defensive mine dropped will stun three antimatters, and another three get stunned. And this was a very brave play from Warbringer. Even with the stuns going down, even if you removed those, the phase tanks would bail the Masari out here. Guardian turret is just the icing on the cake. Warbringer finally acknowledges, hey, it's time to retreat. Where is Mirabelle? I do not see Mirabelle. She is harassing Hierarchy, and she has to run from these phase tanks. There's no way around that. We have Bees Walker going towards the Hierarchy base. This is very interesting, and the Production Walker is remaining at base. Yuno is going for the Defensive Walker now, having seen what the target is. And these phase tanks have just utterly, utterly turned the tide here. Mirabelle is looking for more things to harass. And there's nothing much to say right now. It's a bit of a lull in the action. The Materials Factory is getting targeted down. They've sort of recognized, hey, Novus has a lot of units, man. Figment scouted from Spectrum Cycle. This is absolutely the correct patch to have right now. And from Up All Night, we see Tech 2 on the Knowledge Vault coming out now. And Up All Night is operating on a three-matter engine economy here. So he's relying on Yuno to do some heavy lifting to hold him in the game. And Yuno is delivering. Spectrum Cycle patch is down. And once again, it's antimatter tanks versus phase tanks. We know who wins that. However, B is going for a nice assault now. And this is actually going to work out. Yuno is so hellbent on defending this that Warbringer is actually sacrificing antimatter tanks for this push to work. And Yuno is probably going to lose this arrival site and this walker. Another defensive walker coming down, and this is going to cost him more than he knows. In terms of eco, it appears that B has one, two, three, four, five five reapers. Nuno has one, two, three, four, five, six reapers. Nuno has a little bit more eco than B, but Up All Night is operating on a three matter engine economy right now. We have a forward matter engine placed away from his base. Very nice. And we should see the fifth come down soon. And now the phase tank attack comes in, which is why these phase tanks are retreating. Oh, Up All Night finds the stun on Mirabelle. Spectrum Psycho wasn't up, and Mirabelle will die. Mirabelle is absolutely dead. Spectrum Psycho has to stay up, man. We see even more light mines going off. They don't really hurt that much. Face tank on face tank action. We see five versus six, and these walk into the walker. This 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 set face tanks is done. We have Kamal Rex coming out for B. Kamal could definitely turn some things, but he's going to need the cover of a monolith or spectrum cycle. Up All Night has heard that, and he will be looking for this Kamal. I promise you that. Small antimatter tank push. Finally gets this Reaper. God damn. Guardian turret does not go down. The AoE was kind of wasted, but the main goal was the Reaper. So... Not really wasted, just didn't achieve much else. An Architect and a Reaper, good assault. Still operating on four matter engines. Tech 3 Knowledge Vault is coming in now for Up All Night. This is going to be the big turning point. Peace Bringers versus Field Inverters and potentially Amplifiers. We see three, four... Four Recycling Centers? I see four recycling centers. One, two, three, four. So when no one is really operating on a full eco, very interesting. A lowish eco game overall. Walker on Walker action. Bees Walker is winning this. I don't know where. Oh, Yuno's face tanks left, so this attack will now be successful. 
cleanly successful. You know should be building a backup arrival site very soon, if not immediately. But we have two walkers moving towards Novus, and Novus does not know about it. It will be scouted by the field inverters, most likely. And we're going to need to see some sort of defensive walker from B to deal with this, or a very good hold from Novus. Now Warbringer sees this, and oh, there's no flow. Nice stuns, big stuns. Meanwhile, we have a different assault going on up here. If they can pin Yuno down and get him out of the game, they can turn it into a 2v1. This is a... Oh, the Reaper goes down as well. This is a significant win for Doctor and Yuno. But a significant win is happening up top. And B, very smartly, knows the Walker is stuck here for a while anyway. Runs the phase tanks away and lets the Walker clean up here. There's no point having phase tanks hit this if the walker's going to take a while. We see this impending doom coming, and this is going to cover the Peacebringer build-up time. Fifth matter engine is placed in a very forward position, presumably anti-walker. And we see the backup arrival site coming down also for Yuno. Nova's hierarchy can now start to choke Yuno out the game, and I want to see Vizops soon. Field inverters are going up. We see Spectrum cycle, so Figment play will be a bit harder. And Figment play around Novus's flow network is just not feasible because they will simply flow out immediately. This walker is AFK. That's not good. Kamal is also AFK. Glyph Carver's coming up here, presumably to drop a Reaper Glyph. Peace bringers are out. Big power spike now. And this has to be a full-on retreat, and the game might just end here. We need to see a very, very good EMP, possibly on just both the walkers to buy some time. These are mass driver walkers. And that's the forfeit. The army isn't there. And B should forfeit very soon as well. This was simply a case of... Yeah, nice teamwork. You know, bailed Up All Night out of that early game. Not that Up All Night didn't play well, but those phase tanks were what headed off Novus. Excellent play from from You Know and Up All Night. I wish B would forfeit now. Why do people insist on doing this? Just forfeit. It's over. Your hierarchy in the mirror plus an established Masari. It's not going to happen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Let's see what the players have to say about that. <laughs> Light mode switch at the end for style. Well played, well played. Thank you, thank you. Good defense. I want to say Yuno's face tank play was definitely the big thing there, though. Headed off the Anovus assaults. Yeah, sending the face tanks to defend me there was really important because I did not have enough to deal with all that by myself. No, you didn't. On this map, the materials factories make life a bit harder <laughs> for you as yeah, well. Yeah. That was good teamwork from you guys. Very yeah, good. yeah. The face tank movement was excellent. The figment stuns to back up Yuno was excellent. Yeah. But you were yeah, really close to winning because Yuno didn't have all that much. Yeah. He was yeah, kind of I closed off. Why, I don't know why Warbringer fucking gave up so early. I think. I was like, oh, don't give up, and then he just left. I think the yeah, fourth fit was because of the walkers, and I don't think that you could have built up he enough of an, an army. You didn't have an answer for the walkers. Five? No, but like five piece bringers, face tanks, and two mass walkers. It's it's, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's done. No, as in, like, it should have been scouted by Novus. No, but um, it should have, those instances should have been picked up by Harky, because then it wouldn't have been there. Yeah, I didn't know there was one instance. Every, every road has, 
like holes on it. Okay, oh, good no. luck. I want to see a good dirty fight with the obvious like, normal bands, but otherwise be as dirty as possible. Oh yeah. So, game two. It is the same teams and the same spawns. Let's have the run back and see what the players will change. Interesting to see a game where everyone is off racing. Or a set, I suppose. Now it's a set. Pairs are probably just getting into their own channels and strategizing up. One big change I want to see is... More harassment to the Masari Hierarchy's Reaper Drones. Get Hierarchy pinned down early. Masari is not going to be able to defend them that well. Honestly, I actually kind of want to see some viral control corrupt to play. That would be exquisite. Face tank open. Face tanks are ridiculously good. They they carried that game. Up all night played well. Don't get me wrong. But you know face tanks. Mwah. Absolute gold. Absolute gold. Excuse me. Something my eye. Okay, game two, let's go. Once again, reprising the exact same matchup. You know, top right, red hierarchy, up all night, bottom right, pink Masari, Warbringer, bottom left, dark blue, Novus, and top left, light blue, hierarchy for B. This time I want to see better instant micro. I want to see this completely cleared before Yuno gets there. Warbringer is now pinging them out. That's a bit of unfamiliarity for B. Instants aren't something you normally have to think about unless you're playing Hierarchy. We see the single Glyph Carver for B, but this time we see the double Glyph Carver start for Yuno. I think this start is much better than the single Glyph Carver start, honestly. That third Glyph Carver can get into position way in advance. And again, we see the same thing for Up All Night. Skirmisher Portal into that Machina for the faster scouting. On Warbringer's side, it's normal Nova stuff. But only one Constructor extra. Interesting. We immediately have this Reaper Drone going south to harvest instants. And we're going to see more instants collected down here. I think the instant game will be much better for B this time, as there's more map familiarity, and just more of an idea of where the instants are, and of course Warbringer pinged out a few as well. There's a lot of instants on these roads. The main bulk areas for instance are sort of this section of the map here, and there's a few here as well. These are the big bulks, and then along the top here, there's a nice little road of instants to take and eventually end up sort of here. We see no early walkers and we don't see anything special out of Novus just yet. So the only slightly odd thing is the rush into the Machina and the lower eco start from up all night. Reapers are fanning out like the ocean, covering everything. And there's not much more to say right now. I'm assuming this is Mirabelle coming out. Defensive assembly glyph. This is going to be quite hard to... It's quite funny. That hovers off the ground. That's going to be quite hard for the opposing team to snipe. We should be seeing Yuno's assembly glyph come down soon. He's going for the same spot. So he's kind of metagaming a bit. He's kind of saying, I dare you to check the same spot twice. At least that's what it seems like. And there's nothing more to say right now. Oh. Better Reaper Micro from B this time. Knowing more about the map, more familiarity, getting the instance. We're seeing the second walker come down. I expect this one to be the production walker and this one to be an assault walker. And I expect the assault walker to come across this angle exactly. You know it is metagaming. He is daring the opponents to look in the exact same spot. 
Systems checked. Mirabeau is on the move. Is she going to go north for hierarchy? She is. I like that. Much better Reaper Micro this game. Much better. And Juno is now going to collect his little corner of instance as well. However, both sides are missing the opportunity for this road. Oh no, actually, Juno has just been collecting on that road. I beg your pardon. So Juno gets the jump there a little bit. We have the recycling center failing to be built because of the figments done. I want to see a sell on this sooner rather than later, Mr. Bringer of War. Mirabel comes in here looking for carvers, reapers, anything like that. Up all night operating on a two matter engine eco with idle architects. This is not what you want to see. Mirabel finds the walker. Stun, very nice. That's not too significant. If that cancelled the snipe, that's very significant. But Warbringer is pinging out the walker to his ally. Mirabel took significant damage. That is significant damage. And I assume that the snipe was cancelled. So that's very significant. Yuno is now marching a Reaper into the enemy base. This is just a bit of a mistake, I think. Scouting Reaper isn't actually the worst, though. But he doesn't get the cell. That's not... That, that's a mistake from Yuno there. This Reaper is taking a couple of instants away from B, but B did a much better job this game. Eco is much more even. Figments harassing constructors. This is really nice, pinning down Novus' early game a bit. They really like them constructors, man. Mirabelle sprinting down here. She might get the Glyph Snipe. Does get the Glyph Snipe. That's rough for Yuno. This walk is making its way for the Novus base, but Novus has relocated the bulk of their stuff up here. The Glyph Snipe is massive. We see another Reaper drone coming down, so Yuno is down to three Reapers, so there was some good harassment coming on there. This is nasty for Yuno to deal with. Another Reaper's about to go down, and Up All Night's Figments are clearly not in position to deal with this Mirabelle. They have been dealing with the constructors, but to what end? Warbringer's already kind of abandoned this little area for the most part. Antimatter tanks are retreating for the defense. Mirabel abandons the Reaper, probably to outpace Figments. Up All Night just doesn't have the eek. I think that this is Warbringer and B's game to lose, honestly. The only thing that might win you know and Knight this game is this Walker, honestly. Knight has no eco. He's expecting the attack and it's not even coming, so he's just losing out potential eco. I cannot see Yuno and Up All Night's money. I can see that B and Warbringer don't have much money. Mirabelle's coming in to deal with this Walker now, and I imagine Figments are dotted around this Walker. Figment gets another Constructor. This is incredibly aggravating for Warbringer. Once again, the Constructor goes down, and Warbringer doesn't have any builders. Oh, he's got one here. Ventcore goes down, taking out a Figment. And a f Hierarchy had nothing. Ah, oh, that concede was way too soon. Let's see what needs to be said about this one. Look at the money. Knight had nothing. Hey again. That... 
was an incredibly early concede. You had no money, Knight. And you know, know had no I Reapers. I was completely killing all of Warpinger's uh, inspectors. He had a spare constructor. He could have built elsewhere. He blew his load of anti merit tanks on two pigments. So I was about to roll in my full army of pigments and kill all of his anti merit tanks. That was really interesting because I had a walker right next to his base. I kept telling him, oh yeah, I need a walker in your base. No, be m aggressive towards uh, Masari. Oh, okay. No, yeah, the no, defensive it's... walker would have been good there. would have completely repelled the other walker and you'd have won by eco because Apple Knight was operating on two matter engines for most of that and you know lost a lot of reapers. You and Warbringer yeah. had that game more or less in the bag and that walker would I... have... Counterbalance that a bit. I don't know why Warbringer keeps conceding. I mean, I killed six constructors, man. That's a lot of money that he's spending on constructors, and not a lot of things he's getting built, and it stopped him just stack on the center campaign built. And I was, he was about to lose his whole anti merit tank army, so he knew he was in a bad position because there's also Walker walking on his base. Yeah, I mean, it would have been a game, though. That position I think isn't it, lost, though. It's not a lost position, but it's a big disadvantage, and your opponents have to throw for you to come back. I don't think it's that bad, because Yuno didn't have much, and you didn't have much eco.